this episode, we look at mystical spots around Japan and the delicacies of Iseshima. Hi, welcome to J Trip Plan. I'm Thane Kamu. And I'm Amy Ota. We bring to you a variety of handy travel information so you can plan a trip to Japan. Not just the popular touristy spots, but the attractions and sites around the country as well. We also share regional advice that we receive from everyone and also answer questions about travel in Japan. Our first topic today is what we call in Japan power spots. Yep.、Uh, these are places where we supposedly feel like an abundance of natural energy.、Mm-hmm. Like a mystical feeling. A mystical feeling. Good positive energy.、Right? Yeah, sometimes good fortune as well. Right. So let's take a look at a few of those. Yeah. This is Ise Jingu. So, Ise Jingu was built over 2,000 years ago.、Mm. It's actually the head shrine for all 80,000 or so shrines in Japan. The main building is the inner shrine and is dedicated to the worship of the sun goddess, Amaterasu Omikami. This is the inner shrine、right. yeah, that you're not allowed to directly see,、okay. and that's why it's got a wall around it.、Mm-hmm. And you've been there before, right? Yes, I have.、Yes. It's absolutely beautiful. It's magnificent. I love that it's surrounded by nature. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. These trees that you see lining the, the steps, some of them are 800 years old, even. Wow. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. An energy of, of earth and nature. Exactly. Yeah. And I guess you can compare that to a spiritual energy as, as well. well. Next, we have Izumo Taisha. So, Izumo Taisha is dedicated to Okuni Nushi, the god of marriage and the controller of the rich and earthly land of the Izumo area.、Mm. According to Japanese mythology, the celestial Amaterasu asked Okuni Nushi to grant his land to her.、Mm-hmm. As a condition for handing it over, he asked Amaterasu for a palace to serve as a grand residence.、Mm-hmm. Izumo Taisha is that palace, and the myth's known as the transfer of the land. Yes. So there's a big story behind there it. There is a big story behind、mm-hmm. it. Now, Kyoto was the ancient capital of Japan. Izumo, lying to the west, Was the gateway to the netherworld,、oh. which basically symbolized death.、Okay. Now, Ise was placed in the east, symbolizing where the sun was rising, life.、Ah, and、I、so he had death and life and Kyoto right in the middle、that、to balance, balance exactly. Balance of the life. The ba- balance of life,、yeah. basically, yes.、Mm. And actually, there's more to this story. Oh, yeah. So, shall we take a look? Let's take a look. Wow, isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful.、Looks、that、heavenly. is the sunrise. Wow. Yeah. This mountain in Takachiho in Kyushu's Miyazaki Prefecture is famous in Japan because it's another stage within this myth. After Amaterasu gained control of the terrestrial country of Izumo, she ordered her grandson to Earth to oversee it. He descended from heaven, arriving on Takachiho. This myth's known as the descent of Amaterasu's grandson. Isn't that incredible? This again is another majestic, glorious place. Look at that waterfall. Filled with mysticism. I know, the、yeah. waterfall, you can feel the energy again、yeah. of nature. So, we received some recommended power spots、mm-hmm. from people on our Facebook page. Thank、so、you very much, everybody. Shall we check well, out? Let's、here? check them out. Wow, that's interesting. Wow. So, this is from、nice、Karen、picture. from China,、oh. who sent us a photo from the back of a shrine on Mount Sarakura. And Karen says she had never seen the mountain shrouded in mist like this.、Mm. She felt some strange power and simply st- started taking photos. She likes the way nature provides various views of the same place. Leslie from Australia posted a photo of Mount Yote in Hokkaido. Oh. And this is Leslie's daughter contemplating the peace and magnificence of nature.、Mm. Leslie says this is the most beautiful place on earth. My goodness. Really nice picture. Thank you so much. Thank you. And this is a photo from Marine who lives in Kyoto. Let's check this out. Looks quite mystical. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Oh! Hello! Hi, h a n a and Amy. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. I would like to recommend you on Shimogamo Jinja, which is one of my favorite power spots in Kyoto. Oh, great. So, Shimogamo Jinja is actually、um, from 1994 a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. It's about 2,000, more than 2,000 years old. Really? Wow. wow. And it's really amazing. Actually, you approach the shrine. You need to go through a one kilometer long forest. It's called Tadasu no Mori. Okay. 
and um, it has about 600 trees. Um, some of them are 200 years old, others 600. Oh. And so it's really, really an energizing spot mm. inside the city. Wow, it looks beautiful. It looks lovely, gorgeous. Okay, so this tree is a sacred tree. It's actually a castanopsis that is about 300 years old. Okay. As you know, in Shinto, um, everything, every aspect of nature has some kind of a spirit and becomes some kind of a deity. And you see the Shimenawa rope tied around it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. And you see it a lot around the Shinto shrines, tied either around trees or rocks or other aspects of nature to symbolize their sacred. So there's another sacred tree in the forest. Actually, it's two evergreen trees okay. that are intertwined together into one trunk. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so it is believed symbolically to be the deity of romance and couples. Oh, because oh, he intertwines. Oh, oh, yes. Nice. Wow. So you see this gate over there? Yes. Yes. Yes, behind it, there is a pond. It's called Mitarashi no Ike. Mm -hmm. So legend says that uh, water sprang out from the ground around late July, long, long time ago, but it's still considered to be one of uh, the power spots in Kyoto. Oh, oh. wow! And the pond you, is usually not, not accessible to the audience, mm -hmm. but around late July, you can go there and enter it. If you go with a candle inside a pond, it says to purify your body, uh, of illness and bad luck. Oh, I see, so they're holding wow. candles, yeah. Yes. A place to, to put the candles up. Oh, yes. oh wonderful. Okay, quite refreshing in the summer. Yeah, it's right. actually super popular among Kyoto people. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you can do it um, from 5.30 in the morning until 9 o'clock in the evening or night. You can go there between the 23rd until the 31st of July. Okay, ah, yeah. fantastic. Are you making plans to go? I do. I don't want any bad luck for the next year. So. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, it looked beautiful. Thank you so much, Maureen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. See you again sometime. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>
You guys, this taste is really, really unique, and it just sort of melts in your mouth. It looked enormous, but actually, it's more like a light salad. If you have time, try your hand at making kamaboko using a paste made from ingredients such as squid tentacles and white-fleshed fish. Here, I'm making a block of steamed kamaboko, which makes a great souvenir. This is migen kamaboko. You also get to mold the leftover paste into any shape you like and grill it. In the meantime, I try the regional variation of udon, thick wheat noodles. Give it a try. See if they're here. Oh, can you try? In Issei, the noodles are boiled longer than usual, making them distinctly soft. They're basically served with dashi broth and soy sauce. Simple yet delicious. The fun part is enjoying the different toppings offered by each shop. Here, it comes with pork marinated in sweet soy sauce. Mmm, really soft, tender. The soy sauce and the, the dashi, the sauce, the full aroma of the taste. And the barbecue pork kind of gives it like a homely feel. We now hop on a tourist boat heading toward our next gourmet goal. It's a 10 minute cruise from Kawasaki. The boat we're riding is a replica of the ones warshippers used long ago to reach Isejingu. I mean, you can just imagine the old buildings separated here, people walking by in kimono. And oh fishing. My God. This here. Is that the station here? In olden days, this landing was as far as the worshippers could reach by boat, so they would disembark here and walk to the shrine. Yeah, and I love this atmosphere. This, this traditional sweet shop served weary travelers refreshments. Their mochi rice cake, filled with smooth red bean paste and dusted with toasted soybean powder, has been a favorite for some 400 years. Mm. <laughs> very, very good. This is plain mochi without the sweet bean filling. Enjoy the trio of flavors. Grated daikon radish, toasted soybean powder, and green seaweed flakes. Our next stop is Toba, a 15-minute train ride from Ise. Here, we first explore the area around the station. Toba, with its many islands, is blessed with fertile fishing grounds, a genuine treasure chest of top-grade seafood. This establishment sponsors a tour, sampling seafood delicacies at a reasonable price. Perfect. Welcome to Toba! Oh, thank, thank you! you. Thank you. <laughs> Our tour guide, a charming Indonesian woman, introduces us to all the charms of Toba. I have a passport for you! This is what we need. This is my yeah. kind of passport. Perfect. We're both handed a passport in the form of a pair of chopsticks, our ticket to a tour of Toba's seasonal treats. Our first visit is to a long-established Ryokan Inn. Secrets of Toba. Oh, With our special passport, we get to try one of the inn's specialties, normally only served to overnight guests. <laughs> Mackerel tataki, lightly seared and gleaming with natural oils. Please use your passport. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Our next stop is a sushi restaurant established way back in 1872. Here we're served octopus sushi. Octopus caught in the nutrient-rich waters surrounding Toba are blessed with robust umami and a wonderful texture. Mm. Mm. It's so delicious. <laughs> and now it's not only about the sushi, but right. you can see like there's a beautiful things left. Carved leaves called haran in Japanese are often used to decorate sushi. The art of cutting the leaf into various forms with a small knife is one way a sushi chef demonstrates his expertise. This chef ranks as one of Japan's most skilled Hanan artists. Mmm, it's beautiful. It's like art. Mm. 
Last, we head to a seafood wholesaler, not a place most tourists get to visit. It's a consolidation and shipping center for shellfish collected by female divers. The huge fish tank was full of live saze or turban shells. Wow. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Wow. Okay, you're gonna try, this, try this big one. <laughs> Visitors carrying their special passport are treated to sashimi of fresh turban shells. Good. It's the compacted flavors of everything that the turban shell has been eating. So actually, this gives it a really intense umami. I think this is my favorite I've had today. Yeah. <laughs> This ended day one of our trip. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. I'd love right. to go. Ise is famous for Ise Ebi, which is a Japanese spiny lobster. Although, Ebi in Japanese means shrimp, technically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right here, we have Ise Ebi croquette burger. Yay! Yes! The croquette basically is mashed with potatoes. Ah and basically deep fried, I would imagine. OK. Yeah, with a nice little sauce on top. Mm. So good, right? Oh, my. Yeah, who would have thought that, you know, putting a croquette inside a burger would be good? It's delicious. It's fantastic. It's so good. It is really, really mm. good. Wow. Very it good. definitely gives it a nice um, flavor. Mm. There's an amazing place to try this Ise Ebi cuisine. So Megan and Alan took a 30-minute drive to dine while admiring the best panoramic views of the Pacific Ocean. Oh, yeah. there you go, the ocean. That's beautiful. Oh, Look at that. Oh, view. wow. The restaurant also offers an Ise Ebi curry dish that includes a whole lobster tail. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Jeez. And even the curry sauce is made with Ise Ebi broth. Really? Yeah. So you just you say Ebi to the Everything. gills? Everything, that's right. <laughs> My gosh. Now, day two of Megan and Alan's wonderful little culinary trip takes them south to Shima. Let's see what they find down there. On the second day of our trip, we head to southern Shima for more gourmet treats to be found in Ago Bay. Here we go, and we're off. Yeah. To preface our gourmet adventure, we took a sea kayak tour. A real treasure! And you get your exercise, too! Ago Bay is populated with 60 or so islands, big and small. This serene inland sea is protected from waves, making it ideal for aquaculture. The area is one of Japan's leading producers of Aosa seaweed. It's gorgeous! The pattern... The ropes make and the bright green is actually really alluring. Yeah, it's striking how the color merges into the water. Ago Bay is also famous for pearl farming. These Akoya pearl oysters cultivate large pearls. The tour includes a bit of unexpected fun. Stepping into a huge inflated plastic ball gains you a new perspective on the ocean. Can we set up? <laughs> We hear there are lots of fish, but we hardly see any today. This is incredible. We hear about a rather curious local cake, so I go looking for the shop in question. Oh, well, immediately you're hit with this incredibly rich aroma. The source of the aroma is an interesting version of the traditional German cake known as Baumkuchen. The owner of this bakery created the bumpy surface to represent the rugged coastline characterizing Ago Bay. This is a really special Baumkuchen. Instead of just being a single taste, bits that are just a little bit firmer and ones that are softer, especially that deep, rich taste of the butter comes through so clearly. So as Megan's gone off to enjoy some sweets, I want to take a walk around this beautiful area. 
This fishing harbor, found in the southeast of Shima, is home to many shops and, naturally, plenty of delicious seafood. It looks like there's something up here. Let's, let's take a look. And you can see different varieties of, of fish being dried out right now. Sun-dried fish are a local specialty. Let's, let's go over and take a look. The proprietors dry all the seasonal fish here themselves. You can even enjoy a bite of the fish in the shop as well. I select the Japanese sardine, which is a mere 20 yen per fish. Nice, nice smell. Beautiful smell. Mmm. After the snack, I continue on my stroll through town. Oh, I wonder what this is here. This is uh, Tokoro Ten. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, hello. hello. Hey, handsome boy. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uchi no Tokoro Ten wa kokoro ga aru yo. Tokoro Ten is made from a slimy red algae that is dried, then boiled down to a thicker consistency. It cools into a tasteless, jelly-like substance. The owner shows me how to eat it, best served cold. Ah, okay, so it's, it's sliced. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Tokoro Ten is enjoyed by locals in a special sauce of benito dashi, broth and vinegar, with a sprinkling of diced raw onion. Hashi ippon de. Hashi ippon. Only one. Only one. Utsuwa wo kuchi ni motete. De, hashi de ippon de churu churu. Ah, okay, so... Okay, okay. Yep. The single chopstick definitely makes it easier to enjoy the tokoro ten and sauce together. The taste is really, really balanced. I feel... Refreshed? This is amazing. Let's go. We meet up again and climb to the top of the lighthouse, a symbol of this entire area. Oh my god, Alan, it's amazing! <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow, that is stunning. Last is a restaurant located under the lighthouse to enjoy fresh ingredients straight from the sea. We start with abalone sauteed in butter. It comes from the ocean directly below the lighthouse. Mm. What do you think? Mm. The star of the show? Mm. This was definitely worth waiting for. <laughs> abalone liver is a true delicacy, which can only be consumed if the abalone is fresh out of the sea. I could die a happy woman. <laughs> this is like the foie gras of the sea. Mm. And then we dine on eight types of shellfish. I definitely recommend the grilled sea urchin. Very creamy, that's the first thing you notice, is creaminess. The roasted yet deceptively sweet flavor straight off the grill is unbelievable. Wow. It's a local dish consisting of a bowl of steamed rice topped with the first bonito of the season, marinated in slightly sweet soy sauce. Although this is delicious as is, our host highly recommends dousing it with the Aosa seaweed broth as the final touch. The katsuo is a really meaty fish, but that grassiness from the Aosa perfectly complements it. The main thing that really struck me were the people that we met mm -hmm. and the traditions that have been passed on from ancient times into the present. And we didn't bring a lot of money. No, you don't have to pay a fortune to eat like a king here in Isejima. <laughs> the ingredients were so perfect yeah. and going straight from the ocean into our mouths. Yeah. I certainly couldn't have asked for more. No, it was beautiful. Oh, that looked unbelievable. Isn't that beautiful? You get, yeah. the, you, get the, you get nature, you get the scenery, mm -hmm. you get the, the atmosphere of the people, and you get the food of the area, and yeah. you get all of that in one area. area. Another key topic when it comes to tourist spots is souvenirs. Yep, and today we have souvenirs from Issei. Yay! First we have wooden toys. Mm -hmm. They're brightly colored. Yeah, they, very beautiful. They, the, the wood is very nice and warm and soothing to the touch. Yeah, yeah. very smooth. They're fantastic toys for kids. Mm, so mm -hmm. this is a spinning top. Okay. Shall I give it a try? Are you ready? Yep. Oh! oh! 
That was easy. Yeah, I'm pretty simple. Nice. This is well. definitely more creative <laughs> and better than walking around with a smartphone or something, yeah. playing digital games and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. Definitely reconnect with nature. Awesome. Beautiful. And for adults, we have these. Netsuke. These are the magnificent artwork. The extra hard Japanese boxwood found near Isejingu makes the perfect material for these detailed handiwork. That's a persimmon. Oh. Cute. Yeah, it's a tiny it? persimmon. Yeah. Aww. So well made. It's all wood. Wow. We made from one piece of wood. That's a flounder, I believe. How cute is that? It, it has is. eyes as well. Yes. Very <laughs> cute, isn't it? Very yeah. cute. Well, what's it for, actually? Netsuke is for um, basically wrapping around your kimono sash. When they didn't have any pockets, they needed to use these things to attach other items oh, to your kimono without having to walk so around with a bag. Netsuke remained popular today as a decorative art coveted for the fine craftsmanship. Look how detailed that is. The workmanship is so wonderful. And you can check out the details of today's trip on our page. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's uh, feature on power spots yes. and Iseshima. Mm -hmm. Both very, 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 very enriching, invigorating, and wonderful experiences. Yeah, even just looking at the videos mm -hmm. themselves, like I felt a nice did you feel energy, positive energy playing did you? here. Oh, great. And I hope you guys felt the same positive energy as well. We aim to provide you with suggestions and information to suit your travel needs. So if you have any experiences that you want to share with us, please, please write to us on our page. And we hope to catch you again on the next interesting trip to Japan. Till then. See you next time. Bye. Bye, Nara. <laughs>